Hello chess friends and welcome to your side of chess channel and welcome back to the exciting world chess championship match between the two top grandmasters the current world champion Dingler and of course the young talented challenger from India Gukesh Tomaraju so first of all I wanted to say that I'm sorry for this late upload uh, I had to work today I had a really long shift I worked for more than 15 hours uh, got home an hour ago and and I started of course to analyze this epic epic round 12 of the FIDE World Chess Championship match in 2024 yesterday we had already already a great game in the round 11 uh, Gukesh managed to win with the white pieces and actually took the lead because of a huge blunder uh, by Ding Liren uh, in the end of, of their game game but i think um uh gukesh was rewarded first of all for active and aggressive play and i think uh, it was a deserved win because um, i think through the whole game gukesh was on the attacking side and when you attack and your opponent has to defend probably uh, your opponent will make maybe an accuracy mistake or blunder and that's exactly what happened gukesh took the win and it was now a time for dingler and to make something to happen in the round 12 of this crazy crazy uh, match of these two top grand matches so let's see now what happened today ding played with the white pieces and gukesh played with the black pieces but before we start to analyze um, uh, this game i wanted to show you a very interesting game from 2024 where gukesh played with the black pieces and we'll see again a similar opening his opponent what uh, was taiban dan and guyan in which uh, Gukesh outplayed with the black pieces his opponent in this English Open in, in the Agincourt defense that we'll see also today. But what I didn't like in Gukesh approach that he actually changed a little bit his preparation against the English Open. So first of all, let's see this game. I'm not going to cover the whole game, but I wanted to show you maybe this game as, as a cornerstone that maybe Gukesh could have used uh, in his preparation against against Dingler because he's really familiar with this concept. He, uh, here in this game back from 2024 in february uh, gukesh played now the move e6 the agincourt defense i'm just going to move a little bit faster but the point is that after bishop to g2 gukesh immediately advanced the pawn on d4 and after knight to f3 c5 which is in my opinion the best approach gukesh in the game against ding will not play this move c5 he'll try to protect the pawn uh with the move uh, uh with the move knight to c6 which is in my opinion really not the best of ways to approach here after uh kingside casting Gukesh also played here a very interesting line, knight to e7. It's not, it's not a mistake or something, but I think it's really, really an interesting line because after d3, uh, d3 and knight from e to c6, Gukesh managed to fix uh, the whole structure in a couple of moves and he equalized the game in an early state of the game. But now look at this. Gukesh has now great control of the dark squares. No, so now the next move can be a bishop to e7 e5 uh you can also support maybe first uh then later the move e5 with the move f6 knight a5 you play knight to a6 and the white will never be able to break on the queen side with uh, similar motifs like a3 b4 because you have already a5 you have already a knight to a6 bishop on e7 is controlling that uh in this benoni structures it's now sort of a reverse a reverse benoni structure that we have white will never be able to break here on the queen side so here in this game let's flip the board again a little bit and then i flip the board again from white's perspective Gukesh against dingler and now in the round 12 played a different different bat first of all after move d5 what Gukesh did he didn't advance the pawn immediately he played now knight to f6 and after move knight to f3 and d4 okay still perfectly fine and still c5 is working and uh, now after kingside calcing uh here uh Gukesh played now a very interesting sideline but it's in my opinion not really the best of ways here to proceed it's not a mistake or something but I, from a practical point of view I, I think it's much much easier to play this method when you play c5 a5 knight to a6 maybe in similar stuff bishop to e7 then later and you have a, a great grip a great control on dark scores but okay the, the gukesh now played this line uh here um dingler and continues now with the move e3 because the pawn is not so well protected now like in this previous line in the previous line you could have played of course c5 and then also Followed with knight to c6, and then it would have a greater control of the d4 square after move bishop to e7 and d3 by uh here uh by ding. Gukesh plays now a very, very interesting sideline. He plays now the move a bishop to uh d takes e3. Allows here actually ding learning to come now with the bishop into the game, which is in my opinion now nothing spectacular, also for white. But if you play now aggressively with the black pieces, and I think one of the most aggressive ways is here to play knight to g4. 
at least you are attacking somehow the position at least you are uh keeping keeping your opponent busy and now after something like bishop to c1 and kingside casting maybe h3 and then you can go for the e5 score and i think this should be really, really a solid position uh here the engine gives here even maybe a slightly edge in black's favor so at least you are complicating thing, uh, things somehow but you have to be aggressive here uh after d takes e3 um uh, and bishop to e3 gukish plays first of all the move e5 and you see now when we flip now the board uh, and we see the previous position in gukish's game um here i think uh the knight is a little bit overloaded uh simply to the defense of of this pawn uh this whole idea is to somehow um get the space advantage it's not working anymore because you have already the traded off the d pawn so okay as i said maybe nothing nothing spectacular but i think it's harder now to play this game especially because you never really challenged also now uh, here the bishop on e3 and here then continues with knight to c3 why not we have now kingside casting and now rook to e1 and again maybe here there are several choices what um, gukish could have done here knight to g4 is again perfectly fine then after bishop to d2 you can go maybe here also for uh, the pawn on d3 the game becomes a little bit more complicated but i think after knight to f6 knight to d5 you can take a queen takes d5 and now in this tactical sequence okay the position is about equal i would say maybe slightly better here for white uh because of this double pawn structure but black has an extra pawn uh maybe uh, black in the next couple moves can survive this attack but after rook to e1 gukish plays now novelty uh here to move h6 and notice now also what i what i think is a huge issue now in black's position when you play like in this previous uh, method the move uh c5 already then you have in many many occasions your uh, potential queen to c7 move which could get out of the potential attack of rooks on the d file now in this opening uh the queen is somehow stuck here it's so far not a huge problem if you watch now also the evaluation bar nothing really complicated is going on but it's much much harder i think now to play this game for gukesh the queen doesn't have good scores we're going to go with your light school bishop here a3 by ding he's preparing now queen to c2 b4 d4 in some lines uh could be played so um white's white's moves i think are much much easier to play that's the point i think i think about this position of course gukish plays now the move a5 we have now the move h3 which was a good move uh here by ding never ever allowed this uh concept with knight to g4 and now gukish goes with bishop to e6 uh tries of course somehow to attack and control the d5 score but actually this bishop is not attacking so much i would say it's not so dangerous on this diagonal maybe here you can also try uh to play the move bishop to f5 attacking the d3 weakness and then after something like d4 which will become now the move d4 memorize this move because this move is now the main motive uh here for white somehow to let the position explode in the center of the board and then after knight to d4 knight takes d4 e takes d4 bishop to d4 white should be slightly better but at least black has also some kind of an activity bishop to e6 when it comes to computer relation is maybe more accurate but uh look how ding is playing simply the game he plays now a calm king to h2 because black really doesn't have any any counterplay at all maybe something in the, on the queen side here with knight to uh, d7 rook g8 and similar stuff but after king to h2 i think now uh the critical moves are coming now in this beautiful beautiful chess game so here gukesh has some opportunities has at, uh, some chances maybe to do something one of the most aggressive ways is to play a4 this move a4 is just i think um, a sick brutal uh, stockfish line uh, which no one can see but i've analyzed it because maybe if you want to practice some middle game ideas uh, i don't know maybe you're this kind of a player you try to be aggressive whenever there is a possibility a4 would lead into a very very interesting line because after knight to a4 and e4 look at this d takes e4 queen takes d1 rook takes d1 and now the knight is hanging so uh, the queen is somehow overloaded uh, here to the square a4 of course um, black uh, pardon me and white uh, don't have to play the game like this uh, after e4 you don't have to pick up the knight then uh, knight to d2 can be play but now you can also pick up the d3 pawn and suddenly look at this evaluation bar uh the position would be equal now for both sides this was the most aggressive way that gukesh could have handled this position but also what what is i think a more positional approach 
is also to play rook to e8 which is also perfectly fine you're preparing basically the move e4 in some lines if it's possible or you're trying maybe to hop with your knight on d4 and control for the, uh, the d4 square and then i think we have also a solid game here for uh, for black but i think the most natural way and i think um most of the players would play this move uh, that i think gukish simply missed and this move does several things first of all this move is opening up now the f file because when we watch now the pawn structure um we would then have here from black's perspective this four versus three pawn majority and you're trying to somehow to push the pawn on f5 and maybe to do some damage here but even if you don't want to play tactically here uh, with the move f5 after a couple more moves b3 and maybe uh, f5 or you can also try bishop to f6 uh, to control further the d4, uh, d4 square then afterwards in some lines if you don't want to play maybe knight to d4 you can also try knight to c5 attacking the d3 pawn knight to d7 i think really was the most natural way here to proceed uh for black but now suddenly gukesh started to play really, really i would say first of all not bad moves but really not not uh moves that are forcing here white to react at all so first of all what gukesh did he played now rook to b8 this move in my opinion doesn't make any any sense so it not doing anything you will not be able to break of course here with the move b5 this b5 square is taken um, through the whole game uh, maybe gukush was scared about uh, this potential activity of um, of uh, the light square bishop but uh, getting out of this attack is really not not the best way maybe uh, here gukush somehow missed to be more aggressive against dingler and now ding plays again a calm move queen to c2 why not why shouldn't we play like this because uh, we mentioned that the queen doesn't have now so good so many good scores thing is basically trying to bring one of these rooks on the d file and break and enter uh here with the move d4 now maybe gukish change was to play knight to d4 at least somehow if you have played already this rook to be a concept uh with because you're liberating now the long diagonal for the light square bishop here with the move knight to d4 but at least after bishop to d4 and e takes d4 you somehow manage to get a static position and i think this should be again a playable position for black but somehow i'm not sure what what really happened to gukesh today he played such such passive moves knight to d7 now maybe it's not working again because now finally d4 is going to happen and after a couple more moves again uh, white would have a much much better activity bishop to c5 look at this rook to d uh, rook to d1 and uh, the queen is somehow endangered all of the pieces of whites are uh, on perfect perfect square so white is playing in such a beautiful harmony i'm not saying this is a completely losing position or something uh here for uh for black but it's very really, really an unpleasant position for sure but i think after queen to c2 lucas should have gone here with his immediate knight to d4 and somehow keep the position more static without any complications and i think he could survive this but after queen to c2 now he plays rook to e8 goes maybe with the move that she should have played earlier and now knight to b5 and now ding is saying with this great move you're not be able anymore to play the move knight to d4 knight to d4 uh gukish my friend is not an option for you today anymore and now ding is basically preparing the move d4 himself he's trying of course maybe to bring the rook behind and he let the position explode look how great uh great piece uh white pieces are placed all over the board they're having almost the perfect activity and now gukish is uh, somehow squeezed and he's now simply pushed on the defensive side bishop to f5 somehow protecting uh this potential d4 move but now rook from a to d1 it's pretty pretty normal idea we have now knight to d7 now gukish plays the move that he could have played earlier and now a calm queen to d2 and this was really really cool by here ding um uh, he's first of all attacking also the a5 pawn and ding in his analysis mentioned that after potential d4 uh knight to c5 uh pardon me that gukish could have maybe played now that he calculated actually that um he could have played now d4 and d4 is now the main attacking motif of this beautiful game that i mentioned also earlier in this video d4 is now splitting opening up now the position and look at this even if knight to d3 happens um ding also mentioned in his uh, interview that he could have simply gone into this line <coughs> knight to e5 allow even here 
this knight uh, uh, pardon me this rook to be taken and then after queen to e1 knight to e5 d takes e5 uh, queen to c8 and now uh, you pick up another pawn although white is down the exchange but white in this tactical sequence gained two extra pawns and i would say this completely completely winning you have to play strange moves like b6 this bishop it becomes now monster you play con queen to c3 and i think the position is collapsing uh here for black we have here perfect pawn majority suddenly g4 f4 f5 you let the pawns roll and i i think um, this is a perfect perfect position here for white so this not working so that's why for queen to d2 um the whole um concept with d4 is now so so dangerous for for white to uh, for black to handle and now here uh bishop to g6 another uh here inaccuracy by gukish now finally d4 and even if you play now knight takes d4 look at this knight to d4 e takes d4 bishop to d4 you're trying maybe to play the move knight to c5 but now look at this queen to uh, queen to c3 is going to happen you have to now cover somehow uh this g7 score you don't want to play of course f6 it would weaken too much your life scores even if you try bishop to f6 then we have a deflection of the queen and in this tactical sequence uh, white would win the uh, pawn again look at this beautiful activity of white's pieces so again i would say game over uh, here for black so after move d4 uh here what um gukes tried is now to move e4 but the move d4 was so provocative uh here by ding that actually now he forced a static position on the king side where Gukesh could have had maybe some kind of an advantage. Now after knight to g1, look at this position. What Ding accomplished is now two pawns that are rolling here in the center of the board. And all of, both of these pawns are restricting any ability of this knight to play somehow in the game. Restricting also, also uh, here the bishop, the dark bishop is out of game. So look at this this is a beautiful structure this knight is well placed this bishop will eventually come into the game so far it's blocked but this bishop is attacking this pawn and you see now uh the whole e5 move that gukesh played in the beginning becomes now a huge problem now also the e4 pawn is isolated so from this point on i think the game becomes really, really one-way ticket so knight to b6 we have now queen to c3 and now in order maybe again somehow i always search for uh, gukesh some kind of an attack some kind of a counter attack possibility uh here f5 at least somehow at least you're making a simple threat then after something like i don't know bishop to f4 that could happen then you can maybe try to protect it but probably this position would be broken with the move f3 then after e takes f3 queen to f3 still still a very very dangerous position here to handle for black but as i said after queen to c3 uh here gukesh didn't even play the move f5 he played now passive again bishop to f6 it seems like this move is attacking somehow the position but actually it's not working because ding gets all this attack and he's preparing now d5 look at this even c5 d5 whatever the position is allowing and now uh here the pawns are rolling the queen is well placed the rooks are on optimal score the bishop is well placed and now gukesh is trying a4 to prevent maybe in some lines also b4 uh, to happen but this is not ding's plan ding plays now calm knight to e2 goes now with knight to f4 is going for now uh the light school bishop and again i'm not sure really what happened to gukesh today really really a bad game by him today too too passive again even in order to somehow i don't know do something in this game you have to play at least knight to a5 then after c5 knight to c4 at least you're rolling somehow you will probably lose this pawn but then you can play maybe with b6 still white is much much better uh but at least the knights are finally activated somehow you can maybe then afterwards go for the dark school bishop uh maybe go then i don't know with e bishop to e7 again try maybe uh f5 f4 and similar stuff but again gukesh didn't play any attacking move he just played the calm uh bishop to g5 tried to force now trades of pieces but now knight to f4 and the issue is here that you cannot retreat here with the bishop you will lose uh, the game if you play here bishop to h7 then c5 is coming and if knight to d5 happens then look at this knight to d5 queen to d5 knight to c7 uh, wins of course here the exchange wins also the pawn again game over uh here for black so that's why for knight to f4 gukesh was pretty much forced now to give up uh the bishop for a knight and now look at this we have the bishop pair here with the white pieces we have this beautiful structure here uh the pawns are rolling the rooks are on optimal files again 
I'm not sure what black can do anymore. Really, really perfect game here by Dingler. And so queen, uh, rook to c8, queen to c3. Uh, Ding is preparing now the move d5. And when the knight is come on e5, the score is taken twice by the bishop and the queen's activity. Knight to b8. Look where uh, Gukesh has to go now with his pieces. And actually, in this particular position, a really funny moment happened. Uh, here Ding had the immediate opportunity to play knight to a7. And he could have trapped the rook immediately. And again, also in his interview later, he mentioned that he missed this move. But it's really understandable. And I really believe him. And Magnus Carlsen also in his analysis uh, said that uh, he believes here, uh, Ding learned that he simply missed, that he didn't even consider this move. It's actually quite natural that here Ding didn't search just for an immediate win because his position is so great. And when you have such a great position, you're just trying to let the position roll itself you don't have to even uh, calculate so much in this position and ding play the comp here d5 why not we're pushing the pawn further he's pushing now uh, gukish far away from the action look at this uh, gukish is really squeezed here uh ding is playing sort of a bone constrictor way d5 great move <laughs> but very really funny that here ding mentioned afterwards that he missed this move he didn't even uh, consider it because it's such an obvious move M many beginners would spot this move immediately but this shows that actually here ding didn't rely so much on tactics it showed that ding here simply calculate uh, uh related more um uh, on his on, on his uh, positional positional uh style here he's obviously much much better he goes forward he's pushing now uh gukish further away queen to d7 but even in any line like this even if you try knight to a6 to occupy the c5 square then d6 is breaking through if you take of course then we have knight to d6 here uh game over if you play here c6 then knight to c7 is working you take take look at this uh, this pawn is so unpleasant supported by this bishop even if you try you now here maybe queen to d4 you can also play instead of d6 why not then knight to d7 but again this d6 concept is working and again uh, the position is collapsing uh here for for black but here gukesh played queen to d7 but now ding goes with this d6 motif which is present now in any of these lines we have now c5 knight to c7 great move again by ding rook to uh, f8 and you see now in the beginning as we mentioned when you play this kind of a method there is not so so so, so there are not so many problems uh like in this um around the square e5 like in this gukesh gukesh uh, preparation today in this um, agincourt defense now after rook chop eight here bishop to e4 uh play by ding now he uh finally here gukesh loses his uh, advanced pawn we have now knight to c6 and now bishop to g2 here uh dingler and retreats we have now rook from c to d8 and now knight to uh, d5 great move again by ding controlling also the e7 score gukesh is pretty much the four forced here to trade off the knights but now there's simply nothing that can be done if, if knight to d4 happens then queen to c5 is happening so here after c takes d5 knight to b8 but again queen to c5 we have now rook to c8 here ding simply steps back knight to a6 and now of course rook to e7 ding occupies now the seventh rank the position is really really bad here for for gukesh queen to b5 now d7 the pawn is rolling what should you do even if you try i don't know rook from c to d8 then bishop to d6 is here the best idea even if black continues to push the pawn uh to attack the pawn on d7 then you have this one bishop to f1 uh queen to a5 and now you play calm rook to e5 and even if bishop to d7 happens then you keep up can pick up the exchange again it would be game over uh here for for black after d7 rook to c4 which is even a worse continuation because now calm queen to e3 and now rook to c2 uh here by gukesh trying somehow to do something on the second rank but now of course bishop to d6 with the preparation here uh, to play rook to e8 for instance you can try again the move bishop to f5 trying to attack this pawn uh on d7 then rook to e8 is winning the game on spot because even if you pick up the pawn then uh this rook to f8 is going to happen of course if you pick up uh here the rook then this comes with the promotion and the queen is supporting this uh queen here nothing can be done again game over even if you try king to h7 instead of this bishop to f5 then bishop to e4 simple trades of pieces you now go for the rook and now f rook to c1 again this pawn is rolling again a devastating devastating position uh, here for gukesh but after bishop to d6 uh gukesh played now under time pressure uh sorry 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 uh 
rook h after rook to c2 uh played now uh the move f6 and here ding found a beautiful beautiful tactic in the end maybe just for fun uh pause the video and try to see now here the winning idea uh white moves and wins the game after this move gukesh immediately resigned so what would you do now in this particular position okay here ding found a beautiful rook takes g7 amazing tactical shot uh, for instance if king to g7 happens then bishop to f8 comes with the check and now uh, there is no rook of course that's protecting the back rank so it would be game over also here for Ukesh Domaradio. so great great game here by uh ding Liren. He played like a machine today, really like a ball constrictor strangled here. Uh, Gukish with such such beautiful positional play, really really nice, nice slow squeezing attack here. But Gukish's opening choice, first of all, I think was not so good. Um, if you play this, I don't know line, you have to be really more aggressive. I'm not sure what happened today for Gukish. It was simply not his best day. But uh, this is this is this World War Chess Championship match anything can happen so so far nothing is lost both players have now six points and uh, in two days Gukish is going to play again with the white pieces probably probably maybe for the neutral lover uh, you love it probably you see also uh, here uh, additional rapid games which would be not the first time of course in world chess championship history magnus played them very very often we'll see who is then maybe fa uh, better in faster time formats but so far uh, the result is equal and many many things can happen of course in the next two rounds in the last two rounds of the FIDA World Chess Championship in 2024. So, okay, I hope that you enjoyed this game. I really enjoyed it a lot. Really, really great game here by Dingler. And if you want to see some other beautiful chess games from this event, check out our coverage. Uh, here are some links of some games that we have analyzed before. And if you like this content, hit the subscribe button. See you soon with some more videos. And what do we say in the end? Chess is the best, of course.